Hi. Welcome to the Lot Sizes Topic, in SAP IBP Explainer Video Series from Gita Cloud. This series is aimed at supply planners, and any other IBP practitioners. This is Part 3. It explains advanced aspects of static periods of supply lot sizing procedure in IBP. Planners may need to provide forward cover for partial values of future periods. For example, a coverage span of 2.5 weeks, instead of 2 weeks. Planners can define subperiods in IBP, to support such fractional values of coverage span. Subperiods can also be used to prolong the coverage horizon across non-working days. We will continue the static periods of supply example from part 2 video of the lot sizes topic, but model subperiods this time. Please refer to the part 2 video of lot sizes topic to fully understand the relevant master data. We have included it here as a reference. You may recall this example from the end of the part 2 video in lot sizes series. We have ignored dependent location demand and dependent production demand, so only the dependent customer demand drives the additional lot sizing procedure demand. Note the coverage span of two weeks is maintained throughout in the target subperiods of supply key figure. This key figure only allows integer values. Infinite supply heuristics will not run successfully. If you model fractional values such as 1.5 or 2.5 weeks in target subperiods of supply, you can see that the dependent customer demand is 12 units in week 31 and 13 units in week 32, which adds up to 25 units. This is reflected in the additional lot sizing procedure demand key figure as 25 units in week 30. Let's now define subperiods to indirectly model fractional values of coverage span. We have defined 7 days in the number of subperiods key figure. This divides the weekly buckets shown here into days. Notice the target subperiods of supply key figure values are now defined in terms of number of subperiods. So, a value of 14 in week 30 means a coverage span of 2 weeks, 14 divided by 7. This enables us to indirectly model fractional values of coverage span. For example, a value of 17 in week 33 means a coverage span of roughly 2.4 weeks, 17 divided by 7. You can see the difference clearly in the additional lot sizing procedure demand key figure in week 30 versus 33. It is 25 units in week 30, the same as before. However, it is 38 units in week 33. We are covering 100% of the qualifying demand in weeks 34 and 35, as well as 40% of the demand in week 36. Planners may be used to planning such forward cover with safety stock. Static periods of supply is a better approach than safety stock, as it is responsive to the demands over the coverage span at any point in time. This avoids building too much or too little safety stock, if demand fluctuates quite a bit. However, we can consider both approaches simultaneously, if we must. Infinite supply heuristics plans both together, which means planning safety stock as an additional buffer on top. Finite supply heuristic plans the higher of the two, which guarantees a minimum cover, while remaining responsive, if demands and coverage span exceed the safety stock defined by the planner. Let's review planning results from infinite supply heuristics first. Please note we are no longer ignoring the dependent location and production demands, so the full dependent demand counts for this example. Planners can adjust the safety stock, which defaults into the inventory target key figure. Inventory target, safety stock, is 200 units throughout in this example. We have also maintained the coverage span as 2 weeks throughout, target subperiods of supply set as 14, while number of subperiods is 7. Compare the additional lot sizing procedure demand with the inventory target. You can see how inventory target may be too low or too high at different points in the planning horizon. Infinite supply heuristic considers both inventory target and additional lot sizing demand key figures, while calculating net demand. You can see how the net demand is calculated in week 30 to understand this fully. Dependent demand of 52 is added with additional lot sizing procedure demand of 170, as well as the inventory target of 200. The projected stock of week 29, which is 326 units is then subtracted from the total demand to generate the net demand of 96. Finite supply heuristics plans one of the two demands, inventory target or additional lot sizing procedure demand, whichever is greater. Let's compare the planning results in week 30 versus week 33 to understand this fully. Let's focus first on week 30. Additional lot sizing procedure demand of 125 is less than inventory target of 200, hence the net demand calculation runs only with the inventory target. Dependent demand of 31 is added with inventory target of 200. The projected stock of week 29, 
which is 200 units, is then subtracted from the total demand to generate the net demand of 31. Let's focus now on week 33. Additional lot sizing procedure demand is 251 in week 33, which is greater than inventory target of 200. Hence, the net demand calculation runs only with the additional lot sizing procedure demand in week 33, unlike week 30. See how the net demand is calculated differently in week 33. Dependent demand of 94 is added with additional lot sizing procedure demand of 251. The projected stock of week 29, which is 209 units, is then subtracted from the total demand to generate the net demand of 136. In conclusion, static periods of supply lot sizing procedure supports fractional values in coverage span, with the help of subperiods functionality. It is a superior planning method to provide forward cover, compared to safety stock, as it responds dynamically to demands within the coverage span, to avoid having too little or too much safety stock. Planners can combine additional lot size demands and safety stock demands, either take both into account or whichever is greater. See Part 4 video to understand static periods of supply with average demand and target periods of customer demand. You can find this and all other IBP Explainer series videos at Gita Cloud website or Gita Cloud YouTube channel. SAP IBP has a wide range of demand or supply planning features that your planners may be interested in. Gita Cloud can help you understand how IBP can model your specific planning problems and how that adds value to your planners. You can reach us with a quick email to connect at gitacloud.com. Hope you enjoyed this video, please like and share if you did. Have a great week.